A painting can give an opportunity to instill emotion and give a feeling of place and mood that a photograph cannot do. We have a connectedness between all of us, and that connectedness can be brought forth in a painting. With a landscape painting, it is that connection to the land and how we feel about a place and what that place reflects back to us in terms of our own lives. And this land is so compelling and so enduring that I have to paint it. We have unique resources here, and these natural resources are very rare. Many areas here have been so altered that there aren't very many spots left that hold these special plant and animal communities. There will come a time where there will only be a few of these spots left. The more habitat we can protect, the better wildlife and fisheries and natural resources are going to be for our quality of life as a nation, as a people. Art has the ability of changing people's perspectives, opening their eyes in a way that they haven't seen the landscape before. That's why I turn my attention to the Blufflands, to the Driftless region, to help people see and understand this special area. One can learn that the land and the plants that grow on it have stories. And those stories can help you recognize what has happened to that land. Like invasive plants will come into an area that's been disturbed. And native plants will grow in places where the land has not been disturbed. Or there might be a combination that tells another history. So knowing something about ecology and botany has given me the opportunity to see the land in a way that I never saw it before. Well, I'm Sarah Lubinsky. I have had a great opportunity in my life to do a couple careers, one of them as an artist, which I do full time now, and the other for over 25 years as a botanist with the federal government. And those two careers kept me in places I wanted to be. I want to be outside and enjoying nature, and both of those have helped me do that. As a botanist, I worked along the Mississippi River doing research on aquatic plants for about 10 years. And that opportunity gave me insight into how the river helps migratory waterfowl live and all life that needs the river environment. And later I went to work with a team of people that were mapping the vegetation communities in national parks. I've always been interested in plant geography how plants transport themselves from place to place, what their range is, what their ecological habitats are. So I worked from the coast of Maine to northwest Montana and down south into Arkansas. For example, we worked in Glacier, which is over a million acres, so you can imagine how many field trips we had to make to that park to figure out what we were seeing on those aerial photos. Another favorite place besides Glacier that I worked was Acadia National Park on the coast of Maine. So I got a whole nother perspective. Um, travels to an island called Isla Ho where I slept on the floor of a cabin and spent the days tromping in bogs and along rocky coasts. It was just really exciting. But it was during the times when I was traveling to these incredible places that I found 
working with other scientists that my mind would be going off in this little direction that would talk to myself about how beautiful the sky was or what color would I paint those mountains or some other aspect that wasn't really related to the subject at hand. And so I would drift off a little bit <laughs> in those conversations and when I was trying to draw those lines I'd be like, oh my gosh, you know, I remember how beautiful it was there and how incredibly stunning those twisted trees could be and the forces that affected them to be like that. I loved the ecology part of it. I just didn't want to have to draw the line. We tend to box things up. And every time you make a map of the vegetation, you're boxing things up. And nature doesn't work that way. It works on a continuum. And I think one of the hardest parts for me uh, in actually doing the mapping was having to draw that line along that continuum because I so well understood that it wasn't this or that. It was, you know, it was this uh, blending of the two. And I realized because of my art background and my rather deep dream of wanting to be a landscape painter that that dream was starting to resurface. And so I decided that I needed to start painting again if I were really going to be the painter that I wanted to be. And even at the late start I've gotten, I realized it's a lifetime pursuit unto itself. But I had to make the switch.